A veteran melee DPS main, or even a savage raiding melee main, might find it entirely obvious why things like staying in melee range is important and have memorized their rotation down to a minute long sequence. Such a player might also know exactly the order for every single cooldown and how to stack it all into the perfect burst, and why this matters so much. Now, obviously, some mistakes are much more impactful to make than others, however, regardless of that, these kinds of mistakes might not even come up on the radar for newer players or perhaps even somewhat casual players. Of course, if you beat a dungeon or a boss or whatever it is, then you probably did just fine. Most of these mistakes listed in this video will mainly be things that can make your experience easier and faster and likely might just feel better. So in this video, I will cover a few common or at times uncommon mistakes and then explain how it can be done differently to fix it. Number one, no risks and all risks. Ranged and mage DPS jobs can often continue their attack unimpeded while standing in a safe spot away from an attack. However, a melee DPS job might sometimes have to step away to avoid a circle AoE centered on the boss itself or to deal with some other mechanic, what have you. Now, this mistake is about both underestimating how soon you have to do this and overestimating how soon you have to do that. If you run away to avoid or deal with a mechanic way too soon, then you potentially lose out on multiple attacks that, notably, you didn't have to lose. Of course, sometimes a mechanic is too deadly or too important to be late for, and then taking the L and losing out on one or even two GZDs to be sure you got there in time might be the better choice. However, this isn't always the case, and figuring out when you have to go is a big part about maximizing your damage output as a melee DPS. Some melee jobs can overcome problems like this by using certain ranged attacks they were going to use anyway exactly at the time where they have to step away. Like for example Reapers using Harvest Moon or a ninja using Raitan, leading to a much smaller loss, if any at all. However, some players might trick themselves into thinking they are not making a mistake at all since they're filling with their basic ranged attack like throwing dagger or piercing talon and the like. The key difference here is that these kinds of attacks do far less damage than most of your other options and usually don't really advance your rotation in ways your more proper attacks would. Reapers don't get any gauge from hard and Dragoons don't progress towards Wormwood Thrust while using Piercing Talon. In other words, while you can fill with these attacks, and doing something is better than doing nothing, these kinds of attacks are not exactly considered amazing. A part of learning what you can get away with in a fight is to sometimes take some risks while learning. See where the limits are, otherwise you will never know. On the other hand, there is such a thing as taking too many risks when it reaches the point of being just outright dumb or ignorant. Just because that particular attack doesn't outright kill you doesn't mean you can just flat out ignore it. Not to mention that if you do take too many risks, it usually leads to you accumulating a lot of punishment debuffs like vulnerability stacks. And if you get too many of these, healers might deem you too high maintenance to keep alive, or alternatively run out of resources trying to keep you alive. In either case, this can turn around and make your damage gain a damage loss for the rest of the group, which can be a net loss. In other words, don't run too soon, but also, you know, schedule it in time to meet the deadlines, right? Take risks to learn your limits, but learn from those risks and see how long you can get away with standing in that AoE before you have to move. Finally, remember that the exact snapshot of attacks can sometimes be a bit weird. So if you plan to dodge by backflipping out or teleporting, do make sure to move just a bit in advance. Number two, sitting on cooldowns. Most melee DPS jobs have a lot of buttons that are intended to be used together, like a damage buff and a bunch of OGCD attacks to use during it. This can lead to a position where something drifted away, so you have to choose between using Lance Charge and Dragon Sight slightly off from each other, or let one of them sit at the ready to wait for them to realign. Maybe Dragonfire Dive no longer lines up with Lance Charge. 
whatever it is. Admittedly, this is also a mistake I myself actually do a lot. And part of it can stem from the fact that the player isn't well acquainted with how to actually perform the rotation if things are not aligned properly. Or alternatively, that it just feels better when everything is used together. It, it does. So the potential damage lost is worth that sacrifice because waiting could be more fun. With that said, in most cases, using your cooldowns on cooldown is better than sitting on them. If Lance Charge sits at the ready for 30 seconds to align with Dragon Sight, then you may have lost half of a Lance Charge use as a result. And whether it is or is not a loss is too difficult to calculate in the moment most of the time. Another reason melee DPS players might sit on cooldowns is instead simply because they don't want to use their cooldowns on trash mobs. They want to keep everything nice, neat and tidy for when the boss comes and you can go full blast. This also sort of makes sense, because often what is focused on when learning or even mastering a job is getting the most optimal and effective single target rotation. Who cares about AoE, am I right? But actually, in dungeon content, using all your cooldowns on the first big AoE pull and then on cooldown almost always leads to your cooldowns coming up when they need to. Although, depending on the power of your group, this can mean your opener starts a bit weird because your cooldowns become ready like 10 seconds into the boss fight instead of being ready at the very start. However, overall, using all these cooldowns on cooldown leads to you getting to press all these fun buttons way more in the course of a dungeon. Don't save your cooldowns for the bosses. Use them when you have them. Number three, ignoring positionals and over adherence to positionals. All melee DPS jobs have some attacks that get a potency boost if used from the correct position relative to the enemy. Reaper Shroud Generators gain 60, Monk and Ninja Step 3 combos gain 60, Samurai Step 3 combos gain 50, and Dragoon's Chaotic Spring and Step 4 and 5s gain 40. This might not sound like much, but depending on the job in question, this can be anywhere between a 13% potency gain on the specific action up to over 20%. So simply trying to do the positional is always worth it. To do this, keep in mind that the flank or the side of an enemy is the 90 degree angle around the sides of the enemy, which happens to end right where the open part of the targeting reticle is. The open part of the targeting reticle is itself the back or the rear side. Furthermore, if an enemy does not have an open backside on their targeting reticle, then all positional requirements are automatically succeeded, so you don't have to worry about this. And finally, it is worth keeping in mind that the game checks whether you are at the right position right at the start of your attack. Remember to make use of True North if you're finding it difficult to reach the positional. On the other hand, do not delay your attacks to reach the positional. If you gain, say, 20% extra potency on the attack for being in the right position for it, then running to that position with your GCD ready for more than a fifth of your actual GCD would lead to a damage loss instead of a gain. And this is of course also ignoring all of the other things that go on hold when you stop spinning the GCD. While delaying your current GCD a fifth of your GCD is a loss of 20% of course, ultimately this delay could lead you to losing out on a much stronger GCD three minutes later. In other words, it is more important to use your GCDs when they come up, on time, always be casting as they say, than it is to be in the right spot for the attack. But do try to make it in time anyway. Number four. The Pentaweave. Right, so I set up Disembowel, so I have my damage buff up. Then, let's see, Lance Charge and Dragon Sight and Battle Litany. Now my attacks are fully boosted. Now I can use all of my jumps and all of my cooldowns to do all the damage. Oh, right, uh, my GCD. Not exclusive to Dragoons, obviously. This is possibly more common to happen for Dragoons, Ninjas and Monks especially, but could even happen for a Samurai and on rare occasion a Reaper. Usually this happens if the player is not aware of why it is so important to keep the GCD spinning. 
A nice way to look at it is to think of your GCD as a 2.5 second cooldown, obviously. And if you want to use everything on cooldown, then obviously you have to use your GCD every 2.5 seconds and then fit everything else in between. To give a perhaps more clear example of this, although it will be with a ranged job, Bard's Imperial Arrow has a cooldown of 15 seconds. A Bard wants to use this on cooldown. They also have Sidewinder, which has a cooldown of 60 seconds. Sidewinder is only slightly stronger than Imperial Arrow, and given all the other goodies that Imperial Arrow causes, it is probably better overall to use Imperial Arrow. But more importantly, if you delay Imperial Arrow by one GCD, then you lose on average one sixth of an Imperial Arrow over the course of a fight. If you instead delay Sidewinder by one GCD, you lose on average one twenty fourth of a Sidewinder over the course of a fight. It is a lot less likely you even lose a Sidewinder cast at all by doing so. Compare this to the actual GCD. If you delay your GCD by one second, then you lose out on 40% of a base GCD over the course of a fight. It is immediately lost because there's a 100% chance you will actually see that GCD be lost. This is why it is important to keep the GCD spinning. Because of the way animation locking works after an action, you cannot use another action for at least half a second after you used something, and this is increased by two times your latency. Some actions, like Dragoon Star Diver, take significantly longer than that. Despite this, most players are able to at least single weave one OGCD between two GCDs without delaying the GCD. The important part is filling OGCDs between your GCDs. If you are curious about this particular subject, I have a video where I go more in depth about it. In fact, I have multiple and I will put a link to at least one of them in the description. Number 5. Splitting Damage Buffs This one is a bit weird, but the players that do it usually come with a genuine reason for it that kind of makes sense. That is to say, they don't just do this blindly. The reasoning goes as follows. If I use Lance Charge, and then when that ends I use Dragon Sight, and then when that ends I use Battle Litany, then I have a higher average damage boost over a longer period of time, so I do more damage with all of my attacks for longer. It is a bit like the same logic as defensive cooldown cycling, just in the opposite direction. Now, the problem with this is of course that because your filler rotation isn't nearly as strong as your burst, Spreading your damage buffs out over a long period of time will increase the damage of your filler, which is weaker, while reducing the damage of your burst, which is stronger. By spreading out Lance Charge, Dragon Sight and Battle Litany, for example, over a long period of time, you are mainly boosting those 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 combo steps, slightly, while taking away damage from all those jumps and Star Divers and Nastrons you will use during your burst anyway. Notably, the filler steps during your burst would also benefit more from stacking these kinds of damage buffs. Doing 5% more damage with Heaven's Thrust 3 times is the same as doing 15% more damage with Heaven's Thrust once and then doing normal damage with it twice. However, because buffs stack multiplicatively, if you had three different 5% damage boosts, stacking them would lead to doing 15.76% more damage, rather than just 15%. In reality, Dragoon has two 10% damage buffs of course. This kind of damage buff splitting problem isn't something all melee DPS jobs deal with. Notably, Reaper only has one and Samurai doesn't have any at all. However, Dragoons have three, Ninjas have two, and Monks have two, with Riddle of Fire and Brotherhood, and three if you count Riddle of Wind. But these things are best used on cooldown anyway, so these three jobs are a lot more prone to make this mistake. Simply put, don't try to get too smart with it. Simply stacking everything and then going full blast is often the best choice with the outliers being if a specific fight calls for you to not go full blast, or if the fight requires you to burst later or something. 
So with that said, do you have any advice for aspiring melee DPS players? Maybe a mistake you see happen a lot? I would love to hear about it in the comments. Now, that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to support me and my channel more directly, you can become a member like these wonderful people here. You can also alternatively support me through Ko-Fi, link in the description. You can also support the channel by letting the YouTube algorithm know by liking the video, leaving a comment, subscribing, sharing, and hitting the bell to get notified when next I post a video. Fun fact, Ninja used to have only one damage buff, but when the raid buff style effect of Trick Attack was moved to Mug to make it a 2 minute cooldown, Trick Attack was given a personal damage boosting debuff instead, meaning Ninja now has two.